so employment income has been given as 40000 and uh, we have to calculate income tax liability as employment income is part of uh, a non saving income so first of all uh, we have identified the total income just one source of income then deduct personal allowance that is uh, 12500 and we have uh, taxable income of 27500 there is just one source of income so the basic rate is applicable and the basic rate is 20% so the tax liability is 5,500. Now let's move to another question. Now in this uh, example, we have employment income, which is uh, a non-saving income, as well as uh, we have property income. This is also non-saving income. So two non-saving income combined together, this is, uh, uh, this is uh, 30,000. So, so the two income combined together is uh, 60,000. So we have uh, total income of uh, 60,000 and uh, as it is less than 100,000, so PA is 100% available. So 12,500 being deducted and we have taxable income of 47,500. But the basic rate band is uh, only 37,500. So it, the income falls in higher rate tax band. Now let's apply the rate. So up to the basic rate band that is uh, available up to 37,500, the rate is 20% non-saving income. So this is 7,500 and the difference between uh, the income 47,500 and the basic rate, the difference which fall in higher rate tax. So the tax rate is double now and uh, the liability becomes 11,500. So there is a concept of uh, up to up to basic rate, the rate is 20% and on additional income, the rate is 40%. Another example. Now in this example, we have employment income of 60,000, which is a non-saving income, property income 60,000 and tax adjusted trading profit 60,000. So this is all non-saving income. Combined together, we have a total income of 1,80,000. And now the personal allowance is zero. Because why personal allowance is zero? Because uh, if uh, adjusted net income is greater than 1,25,000 or equal to 1,25,000, then personal allowance becomes zero. Now the taxable income is same as total income. Now let's apply the rates on this 1,80,000 non-saving income. So up to the basic rate band that is 37,500, the rate is 20% and that becomes uh, 37,500 to 7,500. Now our second band ended at 1,50,000. So find out the difference between 150 and 37,500. So the income that falls in second band is this one and the rate is 40 percent. So we have uh, 45,000 tax on this. Now the total income is 180,000 falls in third band. A portion of income falls in third band and that is 30,000. So the rate is the additional rate is 45 percent. So we have uh, 30,000 into 0.45, that is 13,500. And total liability now, sixty-six thousand. Tax liability or tax. Now let's include the. Uh, uh, saving income as well in this. So in this example, we have uh, non-saving income of 20,000 and uh, saving income that is interest income of 10,000. Calculate income tax liability. Now, as there are two sources of income, two different sources of income, so it's better to perf uh, prepare a pro forma. And the first column is non-saving income, the second column is saving income, and then a column of total. So employment income, part of non-saving income, interest income, part of saving income. And this way we have total income of total non-saving income 20,000 and total saving income of 10,000. So the total income is 30,000 
segregated into saving income and non saving income now as the total income is below 100000 so a personal allowance of 12500 is eligible and in this way our uh, non saving taxable income is 7500 remember that uh, the personal allowance is to be applied first from non saving income and then applying from the saving income or then from the dividend income the sequence is very important so the non saving taxable income is 7500 the taxable saving income is 10000 total taxable income is 17500 from this figure you can assess that the person is a basic rate taxpayer so the basic rate rule will be applicable so the non saving income is 7500 non saving is uh, 7500 so the basic rate of non saving income is uh, 20% so 20% is uh, applicable on that and uh, it results in 1500 now the remaining portion is uh, saving income but you know that uh, as far as saving income is concerned there is nrb for a basic rate taxpayer the nrb value is 1000 so first of all a portion of saving income falls under nrb so we'll get the benefit of nrb that is 1000 of saving income will be taxed at the rate of zero percent and the remaining saving income that falls in the first band entirely that is total 10,000 was a saving income 1000 is already covered so we have 9000 and it's a basic rate taxpayer so the basic rate is 20 percent on saving income as well and this is in this way we have uh, 3300 of x liability when you have to apply income tax rate on saving income always be careful about the nil rate band now let's take another example so in this example we have employment income which is a non saving income and uh, then an interest income which is a saving income calculate income tax liability again a performer is needed so employment income 50000 interest income 40,000 and a total income of 90,000. Now, as income is less than 100,000, so full personal allowance is available. So, taxable non saving income is 37,500, taxable saving income is 40,000, total taxable income is 77,500. This shows that the person is now not a basic rate taxpayer, rather than the person is a higher rate taxpayer. So, now let's see how we can apply this. So we have uh, non-saving income first. Our non-saving non income is entirely falls under the basic rate limit. That is 37,500. And the rate is 20%. And uh, 37,500 into 20. That is 7,500. Now, we have to cover the saving income. So the nil rate band concept is to be applied. Saving income NRB. But as the person is a higher rate taxpayer, so the NRB is now only applicable to 500 value and that is zero. So the remaining saving income falls in the second band and that remaining saving income is 40,000 minus 500, 39,500 in the second band, and the second band rate is 40%. So we have 39,500, and second rate band is 40%. So this is 15,800. And in this way, we have uh, total value of income tax liability is 23,000. Another question We have employment income of one lakh fifty thousand, interest income of forty thousand, and we have to calculate income tax liability. Again, a performa is being set up. Total income is now one lakh fifty thousand employment income, 
forty thousand, and then we have total income of one lakh ninety thousand. As this is more than one hundred thousand, so P A is usually not applicable on this. So let me just correct it. So the P A calculation will not needed now, and in this way our valuation will be bit changed, and uh, it will be like. So the total income and the taxable income is now same, and that is one lakh fifty thousand, forty thousand, and it's one lakh ninety thousand. Now the person falls in the additional rate tax. So now we have to calculate non-saving income, non-saving income is one lakh fifty thousand. So Thirty-seven thousand five hundred. The basic rate is applicable. Twenty percent. That is seven thousand five hundred. And uh, the threshold up to one lakh fifty thousand. So we have one one two five double zero. The second rate is applicable. That is forty percent. And uh, in this way. One one two five hundred into forty, that is uh, forty five thousand. Now the saving income, there will be no NRB now, no NRB because the person is now an additional rate taxpayer, and for an additional rate taxpayer, the NRB is not applicable. So the whole uh, saving income falls in third band, that is forty thousand, and the third band rate is. Forty-five percent with no NRB. So in this way, total value that is forty thousand into point four five comes to be eighteen thousand, and our income tax liability is seven thousand five hundred forty-five thousand and eighteen thousand. That is seven zero five double zero. This is our liability. 